today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Bible Study Bible. This is a rather unique product. It is a 66 book Protestant Bible in the New King James Version. And essentially, it is a text Bible with study guides, a concordance, and color maps. There is no box, but it does come with a sleeve, cardboard sleeve. And here are the key points. A study guide for every chapter of the Bible. 1,200 study guides. Topical 4 to 13 week study guides on key subjects. A concordance maps. And it says 9.5 point print. I think that's accurate. The name of the uh, crafter of this Bible. This is style number 8853BRN. It's in brown, saddle brown, leather soft, and the ISBN is here, 9780785253358. The Bible Study Bible is 9 and 5 eighths inches tall, 6 and 11 sixteenths inches wide, and 1.83 inches thick. I have it here in a stack with some other Bibles that you might own a copy of. It is comparable in size to the other ones, but a bit smaller. So we have the NKJV Study Bible. This is the Ancient Faith Study Bible, Christian Standard Bible, and the ESV Study Bible. If we open the Bible and look inside, we see that the text is presented in two columns. Two columns per page. Each column is 64 millimeters wide. There are about 45 characters per line on each column, and there can be as many as 59 lines per column. Page dimensions are 235 millimeters tall, 158 millimeters wide, that's 9 and a quarter inches tall, 6.22 inches wide. At the top of the page, the margin between the top of the line, top, topmost line of text and the edge of the paper is 14 to 17 millimeters. The inner margin can be as much as 12 millimeters. The outer margin is 12 to 14 millimeters. And the margin at the bottom of the page is 10 to 12 millimeters. There are 25.4 millimeters in an inch, so that inner and outer margin those are around half an inch in size. The text here is line matched to the text on the opposite side of the page, but it is not line matched to study guides or introductory material. So this text here is not line matched to the book introduction. And the text on this page here is not line matched to study guide on the opposite side. Words that the translators add for clarity but which aren't present in the original language are given in an, in an italic font in the New King James Version. Pronouns for deity are capitalized in this translation. This particular edition is not self-pronouncing, so you will not see symbols in or around words explaining to you how they should be pronounced. And the words of Christ here are in black ink. The text is broken up with headings. Headings are in about a 9.5 point blue sans serif font, all caps. The font in the text is advertised to be 9.5 points tall. The uppercase letters are about the same height as a Times New Roman 9 point. Lowercase letters are about 10.5 points when I compare to Times New Roman. The line height, baseline to baseline, is 3.53 millimeters, which is right at 10 points, and I think it's adequate. It's not overly spacious, but you do not have the lines crammed together. There is plenty of white space between them, which uh, makes it easier to read. There is some print non-uniformity or fading you have page 1436 on the left, and that is a bit darker than 1438 on the right. 1438 is perfectly readable. You'll see no cross-references here. You'll find no page-bottom notes. Each book has an introduction. It's printed in about 8.5 point sans-serif font in a single column. 
The uh, introduction has this format, talks about the author, the theme, the time, key verses, and as you study Jude, so a paragraph about what to think about as you study Jude. The book content begins immediately after the introduction. Book titles and page contents appear at the outer top of each page. Page numbers are at the center top. Chapter numbers are large, bold, and blue. They span about two lines of text. We'll talk about paper next. I measure the sheet thickness at 40.3 micrometers. That allows me to estimate the paper weight at 36.8 GSM, so it's probably 36 GSM. There is a light sheen on the surface, and perhaps as I turn the book, you can see the reflection. It's not very disturbing. There's a light pink tinge, which you may be able to detect there in the gutter. There is show through, but it's not distracting. We'll go up to the front of the book, and um, here on the title page, you should be able to read the words New King James Version. So there is some opacity here, but it's not overly opaque. Here we can read contents fairly easily through the main title page. And I think we should be able to see the word Genesis here through the Old Testament title page fairly easily. So some reduction, but you can definitely read through the paper. Early in the video we mentioned the concordance and the maps. The concordance is printed in a nine-point font in two columns. It's 127 pages long. I count about 3,800 of these keywords that are printed in all caps in blue. And that section is followed by the seven color maps. So this is not the 14 color maps that you sometimes find in New King James Version, but the smaller seven color maps. And that begins after the note regarding the type. So this is definitely a comfort print edition. The maps are on somewhat glossy paper. They do not go into the gutter. It'll just move through them slowly so that you can see. They are colorful, not especially detailed maps. After the maps we come to a patterned paper liner. So this is a paste down or paste off construction. I'll show you the brown head and tail bands. So you can see the headband there. Um, ribbon markers are visible as well. There are two. One's black, one's gold. They are 10 millimeters wide, 34.5 centimeters long, and they do come out at the corner, so they're long enough to be useful to you. You see the gold page edges on the volume? The cover is brown leather soft. There's a line of stitching. There's also a pattern. Here the spine it does have gold. In gold, the Bible study Bible printed there, as well as New King James Version and the little Nelson symbol at the bottom. You also have the style and the ISBN printed here on the cover. The binding is sewn. You can see the stitching here at Genesis 2, between pages 2 and 3. So there's a line of stitching here and here in the gutter. And then there's another line of uh, stitching along the edge to reinforce the outer signatures. So you see the same construction in the back as well. Clearly the volume lies open without any difficulty in Genesis. As we go deeper in, we will see that there's some curvature dropping off of the text into the spine. So as usual, you'll have to adjust the book as you read it if you need uh, a flat surface, as many of us who have older eyes do. As we come into the volume from the front, we see a presentation page. There is a half title, a full title, 
copyright page, copyright 2023, Thomas Nelson. And it's printed in South Korea. This particular copy is the first printing from 2023. Contents, a 66 book Protestant Bible. We have at the, at the beginning some material that we will flip through rapidly. Contents of Old and New Testaments along with the concordance. How to use the Bible study Bible. So we will look at a few of these essays later. These essays are printed in about a 9 to 9.5 point font. How to use the Bible study Bible, how to lead a great group discussion, how to use this resource for personal study. The story of the New King James Version is the last thing here. Study maps for Bible study are um, not maps, but they are places to read about particular topics. So how are we supposed to use this study Bible? On the previous page, the author just mentioned that there are three sections, Start, Grow, and Go. And here he tells us a little bit about each one. Start section is the on-ramp. Most of these uh, have icebreaker questions and then an activity as well. And then there's the grow section, which is the meat of each study. Pan down a bit. Um, the goal in writing these questions was not to force you to regurgitate God's Word. The goal was to help you engage, grapple, and think. So in addition to these discussion questions, each grow section contains one or more additional types of content, worship ideas, prayer suggestions, group activities, additional scripture passages to explore, and so forth. And then the go section represents the end of each study. Its goal is application. The next essay clearly is aimed at those people who would like to be leaders of such discussions. And this next section was probably written with introverts like myself in mind who do not at all like the idea of being involved in such a group discussion. And if I pan down, you will see that he says that it's important to mention that the majority of the study content is already applicable to an individual's personal encounters with God's Word. He goes on to say that it's easy to drift into the rut of studying the Bible as a source of information and that questions can help us move towards transformation. This is the study maps for the Bible study Bible section and just to get a sense for how this is supposed to work, here we are at evangelism and it points us immediately to Isaiah 6, 1 through 13. So if we go to page 1014, we see Isaiah 6, 1 through 13, which you can pause and read or read out of your own Bible. Um, and the connection to evangelism seems to be, to me at least, that Isaiah here was chosen to be a prophet. And he was also told to <laughs> expect some disappointment. So this is one of the Bible studies this one's at Genesis 3. It has the start, grow, and go sections. Start asks you a icebreaker question. Growing up, what were some of your best hiding places for hide and seek? What are some examples of forbidden fruit in our society? Then the grow section has questions as well. An explore point here to compare verses 14 through 15 here to, to Romans 16, 17 through 20, and then the go section. What actions, attitudes, or thought patterns are you currently trying to hide from God? So here's another close-up look at the comfort print font. On the left now you see the quite a lot smaller comfort print font in the New King James Version Study Bible. On the left now is the font in the Christian Standard Bible Ancient Faith Study Bible on yellower paper. And finally on the left now you see the font in my ESV Study Bible which dates to about 2011.
I'll say just a few words about the New King James Version as a translation. As the name implies, it's a modernized King James Version, and it reads rather like it. If we look at the translation continuum, you'll see that the New King James Version is one of the more literal translations. That doesn't mean it's one of the more accurate, necessarily. It means that it takes a word-for-word -word approach. This chart was built looking at the New Testament only, 200 verses there. If we look at departures from the Masoretic text in the Old Testament, we'll see here again that the New King James Version appears off to the left of the chart. It rarely departs from the Masoretic text. In the New Testament, like the King James Version, the New King James Version is based on the Textus Receptus. The Textus Receptus is a 16th century Greek New Testament family that is very close to the Byzantine text. Robinson Pierpont here represents the Byzantine text. So you can see that the King James Version and the New King James Version agree with Robinson Pierpont to a high degree. Nestle Alain 28th edition, which is on the y-axis there, is a recent modern critical edition, which is looking at a different range of manuscripts and readings. And um, agreement with Nestle Alain is quite low. And here is a similar chart, but without Nestle Alain, and instead with Westcott and Hort on the y-axis. Westcott and Hort was a 19th century critical Greek New Testament. And you see that the agreement there, that the King James Version and the New King James Version have to Westcott and Hort is quite low. So to summarize, what we have here is a New King James Version text Bible with the 66 books of the Protestant canon as well as a concordance and seven color maps in the back. There are no references, no cross-references, um, and no study notes at page bottom or any, any uh, where else on the page. What you do have are study guides. So this is essentially a text Bible with study guides that have this sort of structure that you see here at 2 Chronicles 28, one such study guide per chapter, and it's designed to be used in group studies, although it could be used for personal study as well. The uh, paper is reasonably opaque, 36 GSM or so, not terribly shiny, so that doesn't cause much of a trouble. It is sewn. It appears to be sturdy. I have no long-term experience with the leather soft cover. I don't know how it will hold up, but I think it's uh, an attractive design. So, uh, did we mention that the binding was sewn again? It is definitely sewn. So I think at least inside the cover, the paper should last quite a while. So with that, we will conclude the video. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, remember to like the video if you did like it. And you're always welcome to subscribe to the channel.